A drift car is a highly modified piece of machinery and it has all sorts of goodies. Now up next we're about to find out if Chad can handle what this S13 has to offer. I've done a couple of tests here where we've taken a daily drive, a production car, and we've turned it into something just a little hotter. Now we're sitting with a bit of the opposite here because we've got a race car that is still used as a daily drive. We want to know how competent is it as a daily drive? race car is used loosely here as Jonathan Rudman's Nissan 200SX is a competitive drift car. He's currently in seventh place in the National Super Drift Series, but Jonathan has been sliding this car for a lot longer than that. Drifting is a judged motorsport where competitors negotiate a course while traveling sideways. It's undeniably the fastest growing motorsport in the world. I mean, take a look at the ridiculous seating position. I'm sitting right on top of the steering wheel here. I've got these massive bolsters on the seats. I'm harnessed in, there's a hydraulic handbrake here, the whole works. And then of course there's the noises and the sounds. I don't know if you guys can hear me over the racket of stripped out interior and the, the diff and everything in the back. Now of course it's got a fully locked welded diff at the back, which makes the slides a lot easier. Not only is there a locked diff, but the rubber suspension bushes have been replaced with solid aluminium items. This just adds to the noise and the firm ride. A set of turbo toys coilovers sit in the corners, not only to lower the car, but to allow for greater adjustment of the suspension. The control arms have been modified to allow for more steering lock. This helps prevent spin-outs and means more drifting angle. Underfoot there's a spec clutch and a lightened flywheel, allowing the motor to rev up freely and quickly. This is connected to a five-speed missing gearbox. Very alive, very active. quite a powerful motor this as much as it's just a small little two litre motor it's quite high strung and high tuned there's no no real creature comforts in this here while originally fitted with a turbocharged 1.8 litre ca motor jonathan swapped it out for a more powerful more reliable sr20 two litre turbocharged engine opting not to go for the more popular straight six option the motor is far from standard though, and in the block is a set of forged Arias pistons and Eagle Conrods doing rotating duty, while ACL race bearings and ARP fasteners make sure that things run super smooth. The power is boosted, literally, by a hybrid T3 T4 turbocharger with a 4.8 housing. Up front, with the removable front end out of the way, you can see all the cooling that a drift car needs. Three coolers sit up front, an oil cooler, intercooler, and a Mishimoto radiator. The oil catch can has been dressed up to replicate a can of Octane Booster. Because what's the point in having a car if you can't have a little fun with it? Out back a 63mm exhaust runs all the way from the turbo and then exits from below the bumper at the rear. It's surrounded by the modified control arms and solid bushes that lay underneath the skin. driving in town or you're stuck in a traffic jam. Oh, we get a little bit of scrub there. All over the place with that lockdown. Keep it in boost and it just lights it up in the wet. And we're running road pressures here. We're running a front suspension setup that is ideal for the road. So we've only got two degrees of camber. motor is an absolute perler. 
The body wears a customized body kit that incorporates several different items, molded together to create the look he was going for. The removable front end is a special rapid garage design and incorporates a bash bar to protect the intercoolers and fragile engine components. It's topped by a set of Moretti projector headlights, replacing the original pop-up items. Drift cars are known to go through wheels and tyres and seldom will you see a match set of wheels on one. Jonathan runs 17-inch turn one wheels of different styles at the front and the rear, wrapped in Achilles tyres. The hubs have been converted to a 5x114 pattern to facilitate better wheels and brakes. The original tail lights have been replaced with a set of projector clusters with the outer glass removed. The interior is typical race car, even if it does have two seats, Spartan at best. The gauge cluster has been replaced with a digital stack display that gives out readings for revs, speed and engine status, despite the fact that the rest of the cabin is littered with gauges. A deep dish drift steering wheel and the hydraulic handbrake lever stand out, all within easy reach of the driver. before you pull the handbrake and pitch the car sideways can be anything from 90 kilometers an hour to over 160 depending on how brave you are of course holding on to things is tricky because despite only being a two liter motor it develops 316 kilowatts and 580 newton meters torque at the wheels I've got a soft spot for 90s Japanese cars, and of course the S13 was a 90s model. They're just wonderful chassis, they're good, honest cars. And even as a race car, these guys have done a wonderful job here of keeping it drivable. I don't know if I'd want to drive it every day like this, but yes, the fact that you can drive it every day like this is nice. 